What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro, a brand new year and a brand new update for the Evolution X ROM. This is the 3rd January 2023 build and of course based on Android 13. But let me tell you the change lock is not huge. Let me open it up. It just comes with the January security patches and stuff. But the other changes are not that much. But yes, in terms of performance and stability, this ROM has been improved quite a lot. So here in the about section, we have the Evolution X logo up top. The Android version is still as Android 13. In the Evolution X version, it shows as 7.5 Menudo and earlier it was 7.4 obviously. And there is the Raphael mentioned, that's for the device name and we have the official build. The security patch here is the latest of January 5th. We have the stock kernel as the Soviet star kernel still. The build date here is 3rd January 2023 and we have the build maintained as still Johuab of course and we have the SNX status showing as enforcing. In the system settings, things are pretty similar. It has the pop-up cameras and the sound effects kind of things. In the gestures, let me show you, we have the quick tap action and there are the action that you can toggle on or off. So that's great for the back tap and we have the quickly open camera. Then we have the system navigation gestures in the settings of it. We do still get the pill length and the pill radius both customization. Then we have this IME button space and the back gesture animation. And the swipe to invoke assistant is also working perfectly fine, no issues. We have the left edge, right edge customization and the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture. Then we also get the two button and three button navigations. And here we have the one handed mode too, so that's great. Always on fingerprint option is there. This is just the screen of FOD you can say. And we have this press and hold power button action. You can switch it to digital assistant or the Google assistant or the power menu. And we have the double tap action. This is the normal ambient display kind of stuff. Then we have the swipe click screenshot that is also working fine. We have the share, edit, delete, Google Lens and the capture mode feature as well. So all these things you are getting right out of the box. And we have this playback control, prevent ringing, quick mute, etc. And we also get a system updater. You can check for updates from right here. But let me show you this is how the stock launcher looks like right now and here we are getting the evolution x launcher it has been implemented recently but yes it got quite a lot of updates on the top it shows evo x launcher settings and in the misc settings we have the restart option you can directly restart the launcher if you want to apply some particular settings and we have the hidden and protected apps and from here you can lock or hide a particular app from this launcher this is just like that Corvus launcher or something like that. And we have this allow home screen rotation and the use taskbar option. Then we also get a parallel space option. This is just like the dual apps in MIUI. But let me tell you, if you enable the parallel space option, your app lock might be buggy that I have noticed the app lock does not work once I enable parallel space. But yeah, that's how it is. You can enable dual apps for particular apps like Telegram or WhatsApp or Facebook, Instagram, everything you can do from right here. From the suggestions, you can of course disable the suggestions in app list, then the block apps and stuff. Then we have the recent customization, background opacity, scroll vibration, and you can enable particular buttons like the screenshot, lens, and the clear all. And with all those buttons, this is how it looks like in the recents panel. Right now, it does not show the RAM usage for some reason. Let me go back. We have the app drawer and in here we have the themed icons, then the enable app drawer search bar. Then we have this row height, background opacity and the icon labels in drawer. Then we have the home screen customization. Now here we get the lock layout, add app icons to the home screen. Then the dark status bar, double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen is there. And the wallpaper scrolling, zooming, at a glance and the other features like the icon labels on desktop, hot seat background, Google search bar, themed icons, corner radius, etc. You can customize. And in the icons, we can change the icon packs from right here. And we have the notification dots and the icon size, font size and the max lines for per app label. You can definitely enable and customize that. And the widgets are actually working fine. This is the battery widget that I have added. Earlier it was buggy, but right now I have seen it's working perfectly fine. If you click on the headset kind of icon, it will open the Bluetooth headset that you are connected to. This is showing the Bluetooth headset's battery and here it will show the phone's battery. So yeah, and the animations just notice how fluidly it works. Yeah, everywhere you are just gonna notice beautiful looking animations. I don't have any complaints regarding the animation of the like widgets. To the left of the home screen, of course, we are getting the goals discover page and swiping up will get you to the app drawer, which looks like this. Swiping down will get you to the notification panel and the quick setting panel. By the way, the quick setting panel still stays dark in the white theme too. And I have added a subscriber account widget that too is working fine. And if you double tap on a blank area, it will make the phone sleep. And if I tap here, as you can see, it unlocks with the screen of FOD or always on FOD. So here, let me actually enable the always on display so that I can show you the thing which kind of speed as well from here. This is how the always on display looks like, by the way. And if you double tap, the clock just becomes bigger. Let me show you from the always on display, the thing scanner is actually working perfectly fine. 
let me try one more time yeah it is actually working fine and the animations are very smooth over here no issues by the way i have been running with 90 hertz all the time as you can see from this test suite for website so 90 fps or 90 hertz is actually working perfectly fine i have added a quick setting toggle from here which is this refresh rate toggle and as you can see i'm running 90 hertz all day long and and the animations with 90 hertz i would say straight butter no issues whatsoever with the holy wise performance just notice how smoothly everything runs once i open a particular app and like once you are scrolling or something in a particular app everything is smooth enough i would say no issues even in twitter let me actually open it and scroll and just notice how smooth everything is so yeah scrolling is not a problem over here with 90 hertz no issues whatsoever there is no stutteriness or choppiness anywhere now in terms of stock camera you are getting a gcam go so yeah pretty basic kind of camera i would say you can take decent quality pictures you can also take portrait selfies or portrait rear camera photos with it and even the video option is there so you can shoot quick videos if you want to but yeah this one does not have the lens switching option and stuff that's why i have installed the lmc 8.4 and with this everything is working perfectly fine like the 2x telephoto lens is actually working fine it will take some time but yeah as you can see the 2x telephoto lens is here and it's working great and the 1x lens is also working fine of course this is the main sensor takes a little bit of more time i would say from earlier but yeah as you can see right now it's working perfectly fine and even with a 0.66x or the ultra wide angle lens yeah everything is working fine if you're noticing even with the ultra wide angle lens so i would say all the lenses are working fine with this so that's great and even you can take night side photos and stuff if you want then if you switch to the video settings you can shoot full hd 60 but 4k 60 sometimes force closes i have seen so i would say this lmc 8.4 is a really great gcam i'll list it below in the description you can install it and the xml for it will be present in the description too so you shouldn't worry about it in terms of overall customization and stuff everything is pretty similar even right now the customizations are pretty similar you will get bunch of fonts to choose from and a huge amount of options i would say everywhere in the customization section in the evolver settings i would say so yeah in the lock screen settings too you are getting a lot of udfps icon that's the fingerprint scanner icons a lot of icons for that and even for the animations you are gonna get amazing amount of fingerprint scanner animations so everywhere you are gonna get huge amount of customization no limit of customization i would say in terms of customization this rom is still a king in the battery settings this is how it looks like and i would say i do miss the charging cycle, the current battery capacity, design battery capacity, all those things are still not showing up. I don't know why the developer has not implemented it. As of right now, you are not getting to see all those things. Except for that, we do have the battery temperature option, then the battery optimization. You can do it per app and the smart charging, the battery saver, every option is there. By the way, let me show you with the Aku battery app. I have got about eight hours plus of screen on time if you're noticing from here. By the way, I have a brand new battery over here. So you may think that this is too much of battery life with a like old battery but yeah i have replaced the battery this is a new battery that's why i've been getting amazing battery life in the health section you will see i have about 95 percent battery health so brand new battery amazing battery life that i'm getting pretty much and the standby or the screen of battery time you can see about nine days here it shows even the combined use is about five days so that's a huge amount of battery life that I'm getting. No complaints regarding the battery life over here on this ROM. By the way, the charging animation looks beautiful over here and the fast charging is also working fine. I have tested it with the 33 watt fast charger and a 18 watt fast charger. No issues with fast charging whatsoever. By the way, in the sound and vibration, you are still getting the Mi sound enhancer and you can enable those from right here. And you can choose Youth Edition if you want to get good quality sound from the 3.5 headphone jack. And we also have multiple presets for it and the smart scene mode is also there. Enable a hi-fi option is also there. By the way, let me show you the volume panel looks like this. You can switch the output device from right here to your Bluetooth headphone or your phone speaker just like this. And here we have the expansion of the volume panel and we have this phone mute or silent kind of thing or in general you can switch from right here. Even the haptic feedback intensity you can customize from right here. This is great. And we also have this clear speaker option if you want to do that for some reason. And the silent media mute option is still present and we have the screenshot sound, charging sound and vibration etc options. And again in the display settings we have the live display and stuff then the minimum and maximum refresh rate you can customize from right here up to 60 to like 90 hertz of course. But let me tell you, if you have replaced your display, you should not switch your refresh rate to anything above 60 Hertz. Double tap to wake, prevent accidental wake up, wake up on plug and the refresh rate per app option is there. If your app, some apps are like glitching out, you can set the apps refresh rate to 60 Hertz. That's how you can fix that particular app if it's not supporting 90 Hertz or high refresh rate. And in the lock screen and in the advanced settings, we still have the pickup option. If you want to enable that, you can actually do that. Let me show you. We have this pulse notification on pickup. 
and we have this wake device on pickup so uh, if i just enable that pulse notification if i just lock the device and put the device towards on the desk and right now if i pick it up on my hand as you can see the device glows in the always on display so yeah the pickup functionality is actually working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever now talking about the face unlock let me show you if i just go into the lock screen and swipe it up as you can see it shows recognizing face and as you can see it unlocks with the front camera popping out and let me show you one more time So yep, it unlocks fine with the face unlock and here let me show you I have locked this telegram app and if I try to open it okay, so for some reason it shows not recognized right now as I'm shooting the video in my normal usage the app lock has been working perfectly fine. Let me show you one more time. Here I'm trying to open the particular app and it shows touch the fingerprint scanner. I'm touching it and as you can see it unlocks. So yeah, app lock has been working perfectly fine. It is present in the security settings in the more options. The safety net passes right out of the box. So you should not worry about the banking apps here. As you can see, it shows passed. So yeah, no problems regarding the banking apps right out of the box on this ROM. In the DRM Info app, it actually shows the DRM Info as L1. So you should not worry about streaming Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. By the way, in terms of, again, a daily driving performance, I did not face any issues whatsoever. And everywhere, I just see fluidness on this particular ROM with 90 Hertz or 90 FPS running all day long. So yeah, no issues whatsoever, even while zooming or scrolling in a particular apps. And the scaling and stuff with the recent panel is actually working perfectly fine. No issues. And here are the Android 10 Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build. If you want to get an idea about the whole UI's performance of this ROM. So the benchmarks I would say are pretty rock solid. A device which was launched in 2019 has got 90 Hertz, has got amazing benchmarks. And yes, this is pretty much a flagship experience that you are gonna get. I would say if you have a Redmi K20 Pro and if you have a Evolution X ROM flashed on it, you should not actually upgrade to any other device or you would not need to. The cameras are good enough. The whole device performance is great. The speakers output, the sound quality, everything is great and the call quality and stuff, everything is great. So yeah, you should not be having any good points to actually upgrade to a new device because all the devices that are coming, Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus is actually about 30K. This device with a flagship processor back in 2019 launched with like 28K price tag. I don't know how they are justifying the prices of the new launches. But yeah, this is how the situation is right now. I'm not buying the Redmi Note 12 series. Let's wait and see what happens in the whole year of 2023. So this is the first video guys of 2023. Let me in the comments if you have enjoyed the video and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Please share this video with your friends. If you liked the latest build of Evolution X ROM, the first build of 2023, you can say I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.